Now to our conversation on the show today. Fresh from the conclusion of the Ondo state election, the All Progressives Congress has emerged victorious as it did in Edo. But what does this mean for residents of this state? The APC's win has sparked intense debate with many wondering what difference the party will bring to the table, especially given the current economic challenges facing the country. As we also look ahead to the Anambra election next year, many are asking if Nigeria is drifting towards a one-party state. And what about the opposition parties? Do they have what it takes to challenge the APC? Joining me on the show this hour is Senator Ajibola Bashir, who is the National Secretary of the All Progressives Congress. Thank you for joining us this hour on the program. Yeah, good evening, Nifemi. How are you? Um, terrific. Thank you for joining us. Uh, your party, the APC, has now won four out of five off-cycle governorship elections conducted under the Bola Tinubu-led administration. APC won in Kogi, Imo, Edo, and recently in Ondo, with the PDP winning only in Bayelsa. And your party retained the seats in three, wrestled Edo from the PDP. What would you say worked in favor of the APC? I think uh, first and foremost, uh, we must uh, thank the Nigerian electorate in those uh, states for coming out uh, overwhelmingly to vote for our party. And uh, our win is as a result of I mean, the confidence that the electorate have in our party. Uh, at the same time, we must also uh, underscore the significance of the leadership being provided by our president, President Muhammad, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, for the party uh, since he assumed office. Uh, you know that uh, he has a track record of being a politician, a political strategist, and uh, somebody that is committed uh, to democratic I mean, governance. And of course, the National Working Committee of the party, as well as our governors in the Progressive Governors Forum, headed by Governor of Imo State, of Uzodima, uh, there have been uh, a synergy working together with the President, the National Working Committee, the Progressive Governors Forum, and of course, our state I mean, uh, party I mean, structure. And you will also I mean, know that uh, uh, of all major political parties in Nigeria today, it's only the APC that is not immersed in one form of controversy I mean, or the other. We are united I mean, solidly, I mean, working day in, day out to ensure that we sell our party and sell our, our candidates to the electorate I mean, in those states. Even by us, I think uh, the matter was challenged. Unfortunately, I mean, the Supreme Court decided I mean, against us. So we, we, we believe All right. that uh, the coerciveness and the synergy mm. among the few stakeholders in our party, as well, as well as the confidence of the general electorate, uh, underscore the mm. significance of the victory of our party in those elections. We'll talk about the controversy rocking the other parties shortly, because the APC has also been fingered uh, by some political interests. But let us take a look at what the opposition is saying. Contrary to your position, opposition says the APC will be delusional to think electoral victory in these states mean endorsement of government at the center with the current state of the economy and cost of living. So they have instead raised allegation of voter inducement that was again widely reported in Ondo with vote buying rearing its ugly head of what they call the weaponization of poverty for election manipulation. Does this bother the APC? I think first and foremost, uh, we, just like our president and our party uh, have uh, said on several occasions, um, we are in one with Nigerian people in solidarity with them uh, because of the present economic challenges uh, that I mean, they are facing. And this is necessitated by the fact that we need to get our economy back I mean, on track from I mean, the Idado retail economy that has been operative. So we know that our economy is challenged, but not the, notwithstanding that economic challenge, the only political party that takes its message to Nigerians, try to identify with Nigerian people, is the APC. And for those who have been talking about uh, voters' inducement, what evidence do they have I mean, to show about voters' inducement? And talking about weaponization, of poverty. How do you I mean, situate that within the context of empirical fact of keenly contested election, for instance, in Edo State? You have in Edo State, for instance, in the three senatorial districts, our party lost marginally in two of the senatorial I mean, districts, 
and that is Edo Central and Edo South. And we won, I mean, with a very large, I mean, majority in uh, uh, Edo North. I mean, does that look like a contrived, I mean, victory for our party? And when you look at the victory in Ondo State, it's a very resounding victory that even the candidate of the uh, PDP could not even win more than one word in his, lo his, his local government. He lost, I mean, in all uh, uh, the local government, lost in virtually all the wards except one in uh, uh, Ondo State. How does that, I mean, fit into the, uh, into the picture of somebody, I mean, inducing, I mean, people... Senator Bashir, and we see allow me to interrupt you very briefly, uh, just to follow up on, on the issue you have raised. When you ask for evidence, Personally, I think evidence is everywhere. I mean, are you saying you are not aware of vote buying in Ondo with all the videos see, trending see, online? I, are you I, denying I, I, that fact? I see, let me tell you, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a trained legal practitioner. I've been an attorney general in my state. When you talk about evidence, you, how many polling units do you have in Ondo State, for instance? You have I mean, more than 3,000 polling units, uh, about 223 I mean, words in those I mean, polling units. Then when you said that you, you have seen evidence of vote buying at the door of which political party was those i mean vote buying i mean place we have about 17 political party contesting election so if anybody had been caught i mean for i mean buying votes have they been able to link that with our political party have they been able to link that with our candidate so you cannot just say i mean prima facie because i mean there were allegations or possibly i mean one or two incidents or people being arrested i mean for vote buying and you not put it wholesale that it is uh, the victory of our party is because I mean we're fooled by. We must deal with concrete facts, concrete evidence, which link not only act of commission but also those who I mean have actually committed that offence. To, the, but, but, to but, the best but, of my knowledge, what is I'm your not anybody? I you don't say so. Yes, I okay, understand so the evidence part. You know, especially something concrete to tender in the court. And, and, and that's understandable. But I'm just asking about your party's commitment to what is a huge concern for many Nigerians who are bothered about the turn of events. Um, the PDP, for instance, alleged you know, that your party was culpable in this regard. There are counter you know, allegations also from the APC uh, against other parties. My question really is, what is the APC doing in this regard uh, to show some concerns and you know perhaps kickstart some internal mechanism to address this issue you see i've told you our party is not culpable for uh, inducement of voters for food buying so you cannot be asking me to for mechanism to address what i mean could not i mean be put at our doorstep what i know is that in terms of mobilization in terms of sensitizing voters in terms of galvanizing voters no political party in Nigeria is doing what the APC is doing today. If I challenge anybody, go to Wadata Plaza on Monday, go to the headquarters of any other political party, no activity is going on there, then go to our office in Blantyre Street, go to offices in the 36th state and the FCT, and all the 774 local government, you see BF of activity I mean, going on in terms of mobilizing and concertizing I mean, Nigerian people. Politics is about the people. It's about explaining. I've told you, we are not oblivious of the fact that our country is really challenged, I mean, economically. We are not oblivious of the fact that our people are yearning for better condition of living. Mm. But at the same time, our president is doing as much as possible, putting policies and programs to address, I mean, the challenges that we have in the economy. You see, just as some 48 hours ago, the concern about improving the livestock and the sector, the president expressing commitment to the social intervention scheme at the visit I mean, of the IMF I mean, team I mean, to Nigeria. So we are addressing I mean, these issues and we are taking our time right. to explain to the people. How mm. do you begin to talk of a political party who I mean, will sleep and only wake up some few days to the election? Nigeria electorate know those who are really identifying with them and who mm. are governing them. Senator Bashir, we are due for a break now. I have spoken with all the party representatives on this show None of them has acknowledged buying or selling votes. So we need to find out which, which, which ghost party is actually involved in voter registration. Maybe there's some spirit, maybe there's some spirit uh, buying and selling votes. <laughs> but let us take a short break and we'll be right back. Stay with us, everyone. National Secretary of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Ajibullah Bashir, thank you for staying the course on the program this evening. 
Another important trend to note in these elections we have monitored recently is the issue of voter turnout. The average voter turnout in the off-cycle elections in Kogi, Imo, Bayelsa, and Edo has been around 30%. Uh, despite a combined voter registration of over 8 million people across these four states, only 2.4 million voters participated in that election. And that number dipped to less than 25% in the recent Ondo election, perhaps the lowest turnout we've experienced since 1999. So people are emerging winners. They are getting majority of the votes, but not majority of the registered voters or those who have the ability to vote in those areas. What do you think is happening? Uh, Nifemi, I don't know when latent and potential votes will now count in democratic I mean, governance. What uh, we are practicing in Nigeria is plurality system, and that is the majority of those that are eligible to vote coming out to vote. So I cannot speak for reasons why individuals who should know that it's important for them to signify that they need to vote are uh, not coming out I mean, to vote in an election. There could be so many reasons why they don't come out to vote. They may just I mean, be apolitical. They may be unconcerned about development in their environment. But as far as I mean, we are concerned, overwhelming majority of those that have decided to exercise I mean, their franchise, which itself is a right I mean, to be exercised or not to be exercised by anybody have come out in those elections mm. to come and vote for our people. The job of political party is to mobilize those specifically that will vote for it, not to just, I mean, mobilize general electorate. The job of some other civil society organizations and possibly the electoral management, I mean, body is to sensitize general voter. My I hear you. And our job yes. is cut out for us as a mm. party. If only, my, only sympathizers and voters of my party have come out to come and vote, so will be it. I hear you, Senator Bashir, but predominantly, experts have said increasing voter apathy speaks to lack of confidence in the process and a result of consistent failure of government to keep its promises to the people. You don't agree? I don't. You see, I'm, you see, I'm, I'm also, with respect, at least of standing in modest, I'm also, I mean, a scholar. I have a PhD, and I don't know uh, upon what basis those, I mean, impact, those, those uh, statements are uh, those uh, what I call uh, hypotheses have been made. I mean, empirically, there could be so many reasons. I know some people who don't, who are well, I mean, uh, in the society, who are even on the top echelon of society, who are totally unconcerned about what happened in that society. How has that got to do with I mean, question of failure of governance determining what they do? I know some people. On the day of uh, uh, election, they would rather be, I mean, groups to, I mean, CNN or I mean, some other international news, I mean, channel, or be engaging in some sporting activities. How has that got to do with the correlation? Nigeria is a country where people come with different kind of hypotheses, I mean, and the reasons for doing so. Unless I'm the one conducting the research, having my hypothesis and getting, I mean, data and scoring those, I mean, data, having gathered, mm. I mean, those data, I cannot speak. Veracity or otherwise, or uh, any other, but and, any other person. And as a scholar that. yourself, I'm sure you are also aware of the daunting challenge of having to conduct research for everything you want proven. At some point, you will have to read other people's work and believe the science behind it. But are you saying specifically that there are no implications of a dwindling voter turnout, you know, on the credibility of whoever wins? And are you saying it doesn't bother the APC that the last election we had less than 25% of those who should vote actually participating? When out of that 25% that came around, more than 80% of them I mean, voted for my party, why should I be concerned? It shows that my party has actually done its own bit to mobilize more than 75% of that 25% to come out and vote. Then it's the job of all other people who want, I mean, people that want to vote on the contrary, I mean, to do so. And of course, I, I'm not, I mean, denigrating anybody coming up with different, I mean, hypotheses. But I know that the job of my political party is to mobilize as much as possible those people that will come out to come and vote and vote for my party, not people that will come and vote, I mean, generally. If right. uh, people will come out and vote for my party, what should be my concern to be able to mobilize? Maybe that would be the job for National Orientation Agency and some other, I mean, agencies, I mean, of government who are non-partisan. We our organization, political party, is partisan. 
and our mandate is to mobilize, galvanize, and get out voters that will put specifically mm. for our own political party. Well, I think your position is, uh, you, you know, stated clearly on that issue. Earlier on in this conversation, you talked about how similarly set to the APC is relative to other parties that have their internal crises. I'm wondering how you react to, you know, the continuous accusation of Mr. President and your party of causing these divisions within opposition parties to retain power beyond 2027. We've had these accusations come from parties like the PDP, uh, the NNPP, and others. Assuming those accusations are well-funded, are we not supposed to be happy that we are laying good foundation for our party to continue to retain power? The job of any political party is to ensure that it retains, I mean, its people in power. So as far as I'm concerned, assuming those allegations are well-funded, we should not be concerned about those allegations. But beyond that, too, we should ask those who are in those political parties, what, were, they, were they induced by some kind of magical power of Mr. President, or were they other form of kind of a spell for them not to be able to get themselves to be coercive, to be united, and to I mean, synergize? The problem of these political parties are embedded in personal ambition and, I mean, with respect, uh, greed of certain individuals in those I mean, political party. When you have in a political party, somebody who has always been contesting since 1993 for only one post, and that is presidential I and mean, in the election, and perpetually failing, and still want to continue to have a stranglehold on those political parties, how has how has that I mean, going to be the problem of I mean, Bola Ahmed Inubu, son of Abibat Magaji? What is the problem of the uh, a president with a Labour Party that has, I mean, three, I mean, contending people for their chairmanship. You have uh, Akwankwa, you have Abure, who, I mean, was recently declared valid by the court. You also have the Nenadi Usman, who was, I mean, uh, coronated as Katika chairman in the sitting room of a governor uh, without, I mean, any basis. How has that got to do with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu and the APC? How has it, I mean, uh, how is it the business of the APC? To seek cohesion in other contending I mean, parties. It's like saying that uh, uh, a, a sister organization mm. to your organization have equal about power, about their transmitter, and then that will be the business of your organization. It's right. not a business what they do with them. Mm. But if they act in a way that we capitalize on getting uh, support from the people, then we should be happy for that. I hear you, Senator. And well, 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 they said that uh, the concern for APC is that it's deterred by plans of major talks among opposition parties to dislodge it ahead of next general election. But we've completely run out of time now. There's one of those people that talk about mega talks. You know, there was even a political party that was formed in Nigeria. They called it mega political party. They didn't even have a councillorship I mean, seat. Mm -hmm. All those mega talks are just uh, in the figment of imagination. People mm -hmm. who within their splinter political party cannot achieve cohesion. How do you expect them to, ask, uh, to achieve cohesion when they have unbridled ambition, which is, I mean, driven with I an mean, absence of patriotism for development of Nigeria. All right. One more minute, and I just want you to answer this in a few seconds, if you can. We saw a lot of alignments behind your party in these recent elections, uh, especially in Edo, where politicians who did not see eye to eye came together to support your party candidate. Some of them even came from PDP. Um, some have said this is a ticking bomb. How do you intend to manage these multiplicity of interests in the coming days? The, 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 the essence of a political party is to aggregate, I mean, interest and to, within that context, achieve some form of coerciveness. And uh, for instance, basically in Edo State, you can see that our governor, uh, Monday Okwebolo, has started on a very good note. And uh, that's a governor that within 24 hours of his inauguration had made some key appointment, which is cutting across I mean, some of the key I mean, uh, sector and also key interests that supported him. And just I mean, on Tuesday, I was part I mean, of the inauguration of the first ever flyover uh, at Ramat Park in the uh, Edo State. So we have a, a system in our party right. whereby we try to aggregate interest and we, have in, uh, we are lucky mm. to have a president who is a father to all, all right. a political strategist, mm. and somebody whose sagacity in politics is unparalleled.
Senator, that's our time. Senator Ajibola Bashir is the National Secretary of the APC. Thank you so much for talking to us on the program today. Yeah, it's nice being uh, with you, Nifemi. Have a great day. And that's our show today, everyone. You can watch it again at midnight and at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I am Nifemi Ogunto Yeh.